Good day, fellow investors. As a value investing channel, I looked at the top 100 S&P 500 companies, and today we'll discuss those with a low P ratio that seem very cheap in relation to the market. Of course, we already discussed the top seven, the Magnificent Seven. For me, they are a little bit risky now and priced for perfection. And then we already have Broadcom at number nine. We'll wait for the end of February for Berkshire earnings to discuss that. But Procom also did greatly over the last year as the semiconductor artificial intelligence craze keeps going on. P ratio 36 in a very cyclical sector. I hope it ends well for investors. And if you look at the growth, there is some growth, but it's not that stellar. And margin historically haven't been as good as now. So We'll see whether will that change, as they say, this time is different. Further down the list, Visa, renowned name, but P ratio 31, and the stock didn't do much over the last few years. So again, nothing spectacular there. Very low dividend yield, likely doing some buybacks, but too pricey. Adobe exploded over the last year, okay, how the market quickly changed what it thinks about something that's insane. Then a retailer like Walmart, I remember analyzing it eight years ago, I'm getting older, yes, but the P ratio back then was 10 on $6 of earnings. Now I see earnings aren't much higher, but the P ratio went from 10 to almost 30, even for a stable retailer like Walmart. Even chemical companies have some P ratios of 33. And let's now go to Comcast. That is one of the first businesses there with what I would call a normal price to earnings ratio of 12.58. Of course, if we look at the stock performance, the company has some good times, rough patches, great times. And now we are again likely in a rough patch and that is also why it is likely cheap. The potential for growth there comes from the streaming situation where, to be honest, I don't know whether those companies will manage to turn into long-term profits, this streaming so-called opportunity. If we look for the reason for the low P ratio, we see that the company is practically flattish over the last five years, net income also pretty flattish. With these companies, the question is, okay, where will the growth come from? All these entertainment businesses are focusing on their direct-to-consumer streaming services, and everyone thinks there will be a lot of money in it, but there isn't. And given the competition, they might need to lower prices, increase the quality of the output, the content. And that is a no-win situation for the industry that we discussed already a year ago. So I have no visibility into how the cash flows there will develop over time. Yes, the stock is relatively cheap compared to the market. But whether investors here will be rewarded on the upside, on the downside, or on higher cash flows, that is pretty unclear. And therefore, the market also considers it risky. And that is why the P ratio is there. There is such situations in investing are pretty normal when one simply says, I don't know, as Warren Buffett says, 99% of his opportunities go into the too hard pile. That's unfortunately it. Then we have a company where we might know a little bit more because of the cash flow visibility going forward. You're not going to renounce your phone and watching me on YouTube, right? Well, the P ratio here is 15. The market cap is 178 billion and the dividend yield is pretty good for this market compared to 1.8% of the S&P 500 at 6.26%. We discussed Verizon a few times on this channel and even when it was going down, I told you that Verizon is still Verizon 
while you're getting a good dividend of 7% there. It has done its earnings, so let's look at that and we can see stable revenues, huge earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation and amortization and good cash flows after taxes are paid and dividends and investment in capex mostly. If we look at the metrics, what pushed up the stock was good numbers in Q4 and now every analyst question that I looked in the conference was about whether this momentum will continue. Of course, if there is a recession, the momentum will not continue. If things continue like this, then it will continue. It's very difficult to know whether it will be better or worse. But what is possible to know is that we have a pretty stable company. So less good year, they make around 10 to 15 billion in free cash flows, a better year, 18 billion. And this is in line with their projection of lower capital expenditures for 5G. So that's something we understand from here that 5G spending for telcos has pretty much peaked and they have their billions to push that dividend forward. The big issue here is of course the debt. They are not lowering it. They are trying to increase the EBITDA so that that ratio goes down. But they said that towards the end of 2024, they will be focused more on lowering the unsecured debt there. And if we look at their guidance stability, if there is a recession, this will likely be minus 2% or the same with EBITDA. They have their taxes, okay, earnings per share 4.5 for a P ratio of what is it, around 9 and capital expenditures going down as the cycle of spending has passed and now they can start paying the dividend and maybe lowering that by around 8 to 10 billion per year which would then remove a lot of risk when it comes to the company. If we are looking further, they further expect a reduction in capex. As I said, 5G capex has peaked and they expect a strong cash flow profile. This is from the conference call that will allow that reduction in 2020 for in the latter half of the year. There was a question on buybacks, when they are starting to do buybacks, but they want to lower that from 2.6 debt to EBITDA to 2. So I don't think there will be buybacks until they lower that. And that is 20 billion. So in what they said, that's two years from buybacks. But in the meantime, you get a nice dividend and it looks like a stable company. Of course, if they can manage this debt, start lowering it and the interest rates will not go up that fast, then Verizon at lower prices looks better. Of course, at 30, it looked even better, but that is the risk and reward of investing. From a current perspective, if there is no recession, if the momentum continues, if interest rates go lower, Verizon stock will go back to the 50s, 60s, where it was earlier. If interest rates stay higher and there is a recession, less pending this, Verizon stock might go to the 30s. But that's the stock price. As a Verizon owner, you care about the dividend, you reinvest the dividend, you compound that, and that is still compounding at 6-7%. If it goes lower, you buy more and you own more of this business. So this, I would say, is a relatively okay investment, would be better with lower debt, but if they work on that, it might look good going forward. The next stock we have to discuss is Walt Disney. The P ratio there isn't that low, but if you look at the stock price and if you look at the earnings potential of Disney, just compare it to 2018 earnings. So that's a P ratio of 12. And the market expected Disney to reach that earning capacity again for a while, then lost patience. And now Disney is cheap compared to its earnings potential. Of course, I looked at the estimates from Wall Street and Wall Street estimates slow growth. So even in this case, they estimate a P ratio of 20, around 15 to 20, which is in line with then the market. So 
they need to justify this growth to still justify the stock price. But one thing changed for Disney over time since then, their 21st Century Fox acquisition, and that is debt. Debt went from 17 billion in 2018 when their earnings per share were high to 42 billion now, and the earnings per share here, those were eight, and now the projections are for five. So a lot of value destruction has happened there with Disney. And a lot of you asked me, where do I see Disney? Is it now an opportunity? I see a market capitalization of 180 billion and at best a potential of 18 billion in earnings. If they hit, then all else equal, market valuations and everything, then the stock could double. But given the investments, given the high competition environment, that is very, very unlikely. So I would say even now Disney might be fairly priced. The streaming exuberance related to Netflix of two years ago, when before it went from 100 to 200 and now back, has unfortunately passed. So the stock could go up and down, but again, too hard pile to see constant long-term cash flows there for me. Another cheap stock is AT&T, the P ratio below 10, the dividend yield 6.33%. Of course, we discussed that in the past that there would be likely a dividend cut and that crashed the stock from mid 20s. I think it was 27 when I discussed it to the current 17. So a dividend cut is never priced in. It simply crashes the stock and the stock adjusts to where the market thinks it should pay a dividend. Looked at earnings a little bit, pretty stable, 3% range in a positive environment is what they expect. Still pretty high capital investment, but they expect huge cash flows in line with Verizon's and earnings of $2 per share, which leads to a P ratio again of eight. Of course, the big elephant in the room there is the huge debt they have and how will they lower their debt remains the question. They will, of course, work on that. They have started lowering a little bit, not much this year, but they had to cut their dividend in order to remain solvent because 15 billion was a little bit too much. Now, I know Verizon a little bit more because I have followed it for a while. More stability there, and that is also what the market in this case prefers because AT&T has similar cash flows for a lower market capitalization. Now, I didn't dig deeper. I remember looking at AT&T, too much risk for a dividend cut, and now, yes, it is lower, but the debt is still there. Who is better, AT&T or Verizon? A deep dive should be needed there, but as I'm not interested in any of those because of the high debt, possible recession, too much risk for me, even if the dividend might justify it, you have to see how that fits you. Now, continuing on cheap S&P 500 stocks, I'm doing this on Thursday, earnings will come out on Friday, so I'll work on this over the weekend. To dig deeper also to update on oil, we have ExxonMobil, we have Lyondell also coming in with earnings soon. So these three stocks I might do over the weekend and you can expect a video next week. Now, what we have to discuss here is, is a lower P ratio better or is it better to invest in growth as we have discussed with the Magnificent Seven because there might be more certainty. And I was thinking about it and I think that, okay, low P ratio, the stocks that we have discussed are priced with a low P ratio because the growth path of earnings of cash flow is uncertain. And there are not really assets to, let's say, there is eternal value that you might want to bet on, especially not with 170 billion market capitalizations. Who is going to spend 170 billion to buy you out, to buy those assets? So that is why those businesses are priced at this level. But compared to 30, 40 P ratios that the Magnificent Seven are priced, I'm weighing and where do I want to be as an investor? Again, to give you an honest answer, it is a too hard pile to know who will perform better. If there is a recession, Verizon goes down, as does Apple. 
as does Amazon. Maybe Verizon goes from 40 to 30, while Apple might crash a little bit more. But then Apple offers that growth potential that might push it higher going forward. So that is the risk and reward. And in the short term, of course, it is impossible to know where will what go. That's the nature of investment. You have to see what kind of business fits you as an investor. And then if it goes lower, like Verizon, you have the dividend to reinvest and increase your ownership base. With these expensive stocks, you don't have that constant cash flow incoming. You might have it from your salary, which then again turns investing to a totally personal situation. And when you understand that, everything is easy. Thanks for watching. Check what I do on my research platform, Still 4 Buys. I'll see you in the next video.